uh, I heard this great debate slash presentation um, about this doctor. It was uh, actually done just a while ago in Squim, Washington. And this doctor, his name is Sean George. And the strange thing happened. So, Sean George, uh, Sean George, um, he's actually this Australian rural family doctor. And him and his uh, uh, intern are driving to this clinic. So they're driving to the clinic, and he starts to feel this pain. So he's just thinking, well, it may be indigestion, maybe a muscle cramp, and uh, this pain really is continuing. And he's just starting to sweat because it's so hot. And he says to his intern, isn't it getting really hot in here? And I love how the intern listens to all this, and it's the intern, not the doctor, who says, you're having a heart attack. <laughs> So um, they get to the clinic, and they do the, I think it's called an EKG, and he literally is having a heart attack. So then he has one, um, and they start CPR, do the electric shocks, um, and they keep doing, but I, after a while, they just give up. Um, so anyhow, they give up, and he has all, like, the medical records of the, you know, heart machine, all this other stuff where it all happened, and... His wife is a doctor, too. So they call his wife, and she's driving out there, and she calls her dad, and, <clears throat> um, and she said, um, I, she tells her dad, I thought I'm, I'm just going to go to the hospital and pick up a corpse. And her dad says, you know, please pray over him. One prayer, it can't hurt. So anyhow, um, she gets there, but he had been dead for an hour and 25 minutes. An hour and 25 minutes. And she goes and she decides, why not? She'll say a prayer. She says a prayer and a heartbeat stops. So they come back, they uh, intubate him. Uh, they do surgery and he did have a block uh, in his heart. They do surgery and he's hooked up to this breathing machine. But the wife talks to the doctor and um, the doctor, you know, basically is trying to convince her it's time to pull the plug. Because that long without oxygen, you'll have brain damage. Like, you can only go a couple minutes. I think it's three minutes without oxygen. I can go a couple days. But <laughs> um, your brain really does need oxygen. So they said, it's just going to be brain damage. So uh, anyhow, her father then calls her again and says, oh, a woman from our church she was praying for, you know, Sean, and she said uh, that tomorrow he'll open his eyes. She's convinced that God told her that. So she decides, wow, already a miracle after an hour and a half being dead. Why not give it one more day? So the next day she's holding his, her, his hand, and she's talking to him, and she says, Sean, and he squeezes her hand. Now, when you have that thing down your throat, they keep you sedated, so you shouldn't be squeezing his hand. So then she says, Sean, if you hear me, open your eyes. And he opened his eyes for just a brief moment. Everybody in the room saw it. So um, actually, believe it or not, he comes out of it. Um, and oddly enough, he says he doesn't remember anything, but he's in this um, debate. He says, I was dead for an hour and a half with no brain damage. That's impossible. He had to go through dialysis because his kidneys uh, were without oxygen too. But um, other than that, that's the only thing he had. And so he said, you know, it, it changed his entire world. And the debate was, well, could somebody stay dead for an hour and a half? And he said, no, the only thing that happened was prayer. And so really, if you think about it, it's this great miracle where he got a mulligan. He got a mulligan, but we celebrate something even greater. All he did was get resuscitated. What we celebrate is not resuscitation, but resurrection. When Christ is resurrected, he's resurrected in us. Uh, we don't get a mulligan. We get a whole new life. Um, we got life that with Christ inside us, death can never touch us. Well, what we celebrate is that we're in this communion with Christ who is the resurrection. We pass over from death to life. Easter does not celebrate 
the anniversary of Christ's resurrection. It celebrates that Christ's resurrection is now here inside us. Death can never truly touch us. And the resurrection celebrates um, that Christ is among us. Christ is the power of connection of all of us together. And like last night, this sounds strange, last night on the news, I don't know if you watched it, they had these two cops from the East Coast um, who are called the singing cops. Did anybody see it but me? Oh, good. Good people did. Um, and the singing cops, uh, it's kind of funny. One's a, a former basketball player, another one gospel singer, and they're actually sound really good. So if they give you a ticket, they'll like sing to you. And like one guy, he was, uh, said, oh, come on, come on, sing. You're the singing cops. And he said, are you sure you don't want your driver's license back? Um, and they're really good. Who wouldn't want to get pulled over by singing cop, cops? Um, and I think just personally, down a rabbit hole, here in Idaho, we need to pass a law that all cops should sing to us if they give us a ticket. <laughs> I mean, if the East Coast has it, why can't our cops do it? But like the whole story was just on the power of connection, how people just through singing, you know, these young people, um, it brought, brings this community together. The thing that brings our community together is not singing. It's actually this power beyond us of Christ among us. That's what unites us together. Even we'd say communion with Christ, the resurrection, unites us with all those who have died. That all those in heaven and us are one. And my, one of my favorite stories this year is um, uh, after Sunday Mass once, uh, somebody asked if I could anoint this grandmother who's dying. It took me a while to get there, but I get there, um, and I anoint her, and they're St. Ignatius kids, and I just, they're little kids, so I wanted to kind of explain to them the right. So I'm explaining to them, uh, before somebody dies, we call out to the saints to come and greet them uh, into the eternal feast of heaven. And so I'm kind of explaining that, no, we believe the dead are always connected to us. And so uh, this kid says, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Well, I have a degree in theology. He's in elementary school. <laughs> so really, how do you know that? And he says, oh. So they tell the story that um, uh, I, have to get, I can't remember the names, but um, uh, he got visited by uh, his uncle, Tim. So the problem is, we'll say, his, I can forget his name, Tim. But Tim is actually his grandmother's brother. And uh, he says to his mother uh, a while ago, he kept saying to his mother, uh, Uncle Timmy says Uncle Ed is sick. And Uncle Ed is the mother's brother, um, her brother. So he keeps saying that, and like any good mother, she ignores her kid. Um, <laughs> but he keeps saying it. So then she says, you have never met Uncle Timmy. Uncle Timmy was my uncle. He's died. And he says, oh, I know him. And he says, he said his car is in Grandma's garage, which is in Anaconda, Montana. And he's right. So she calls her brother and says, you know, I know this is weird, but, you know, Calvin says that um, uh, Uncle... Timmy says, you're sick. So he goes to the doctor. He had uh, prostate cancer that never showed up. Everything's fine. But like, there's all these little mir miracles that show, oh no, we are connected, uh, even through the resurrection, even to all those in heaven. And so what we celebrate is this communion we have with the resurrection. That just like Dr. Sean George I don't know, when you wake up after an hour and a half being dead, you see the world differently. We celebrate, ah, with Christ resurrected in us, we see the world differently. That's why the main figure is actually uh, the beloved disciple in today's gospel reading. Where Mary Magdalene, out of love, she goes searching for Jesus. But she's looking for the body of Jesus as he was. Um, this 33-year-old man with a beard. And... She comes running back because the tomb's empty. And it says the beloved disciple and Peter ran to the tomb. But the beloved disciple is faster than Peter. And the beloved disciple 
when he looks in, it says he sees, but it, it doesn't word mean physically see in Greek. The word see that is being used, Peter physically sees. The beloved disciple, when he looks at the empty tomb, actually the Greek word sees means sees and understands. It's the resurrection. And the idea is, Peter symbolizes the institutional church. Um, the institu- he symbolized the first pope. But if you try and work it through with just institutional power, you'll never really see the world differently. The beloved disciple loves. And so when he looks, he sees and understands. What we're praying for is with the power of love, our eyes are open to see the world completely different, see our connection to each other. That's why, like, um, on Easter, we'll take the holy water, renew our baptismal vows, and we'll sprinkle it all over you. Um, we'll do that for 50 days. People love it. Um, and what it symbolizes is that all among us, in us, resides the presence of Christ. Everywhere the holy water hits. Or um, the Paschal candle. We got a new Paschal candle. It symbolizes the pillar of fire that led the people through to the promised land. Our pillar of fire is Christ. Um, the same way it led them into the future, we'd say, oh, it's the resurrection that allows us to see the future differently. Um, even like the Easter egg hunt after Mass with the little kids, um, that little tradition, what it symbolizes is that when we look at creation, we can find the hidden presence of Christ even in creation. We celebrate at dawn because we're going to look at the world differently in a new light. We celebrate on the first day of the week, Sunday, the day the resurrection happened because it's this whole new recreation. So the same way for 40 days, we looked at inside inside ourselves saying, what is killing us? What is the death that is keeping us bound? For 50 days, we celebrate the resurrection, life. What we're hoping is that in the 50 days of Easter, we do see the world differently. So, the same way with Dr. George sees the world differently afterwards, we're hoping our two will see the world differently in this mystical communion we have with the resurrection. And so, the age of miracles has not ended. It's only moved inside of us. And so please stand to renew your baptismal promises.